Shaheed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? Yeah, 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 Get your shit on the screen, Yo, 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 it's your boy SP the Ghost, L-O-X-D block. Big shout out to the barbershop, my homie. Finally Mel's. Big shout out to Lil Mel too. You can need a cut. Finally Mel's, nigga. Finally Mel's. Holla. Saying he ain't just a barber. I call him a hair Alice. Where we can educate, entertain, and show entrepreneurship. Look, Mel is a boss. He's self-made, came up. Gotta respect that. You look like hell, come see Mel. First impression means everything. The feel of success, yeah, that's what he gives. Familiar faces, so you feel in good hands. You never know who might swing through and hang and build with ya. Hear the latest news from two first hands. Or how to strive to be the men of our community. It's not just a cut, it's the world seeing you. So he provides a perfect scene so they all can view. More than just a business, he gives back. Food drives, school supplies, yeah, he does that. To look good is to feel good, we teach him well. Your first stop to get the start, it should be finally Mel. Mel definitely has the spirit, the technique, the talent for this person to be able to do what he do, especially coming from where he's coming from. I definitely had to showcase and show a light on that. So without further ado, CD Slickers Entertainment. Finally, I got the opportunity to interview my boy Mel. Oh Mel, yeah, what's up? What's oh, good, man. what's good? Finally I'm here, man. Finally Mel is older than his. Look familiar, bro. Right. What's the deal, man? I'm it's here good. finally Mel. This is my brother. Keeping me intact and keeping everything good. I'm D official. Definitely. Hit me up on the gram. I'm on all types of web series from Bomb Rush to Project Key to the movie 730. Sean Bell coming soon, True Vision Films. But it ain't about me, it's about finally Mel. Mel. Keeping my lineup right, keeping my head tight. So I'm glad I could catch him because I came early this morning. I had to go to an interview. So now I double back just to catch up with my man. My man, finally Mel. That's my bro. Finally doing it. And I appreciate it. Hey, what's the deal, everybody? What's going on? I finally got the man, the legend, hard working and humble. This time we got him in a barber chair. I want to introduce everybody to my boy. In his words, finally, Mel. What's up? What up? What's going on? Definitely, definitely. Um, I've been hearing about your wave. I've seen your talent. i actually seen it firsthand. For a lot of people that don't know, tell them what you do. What are you about? I'm a hairstylist. Woman child, what's good? It's your boy Big Shy, East New York, Brooklyn. Back in the days, three legends when it came to the barbershop. My boy Zach, shout out to Zach. Mr. Afro, brothers, then you had Uncle Mel. You know what I'm saying? He ain't just a barber. I call him a hair Alice. Mm. He did more than just cut my hair. He told me how to get the products and stuff that, you know what I'm saying, shows that he cares about your appearance, how you look, how you go out there in the world. Ain't just a cut, get out the chair. That's why I call him a hairologist. Hairstylist, is that a barber? You do hair, females? I do hair, um, I do anybody here. Okay. Got hair, I cut it. Okay, okay, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Um, Babies, men, children, kids. Hello, everyone. Mel's cutting my last kids here. 27 years ago, he cut my first son's hair, and he hadn't seen Mel in maybe 15 years. And lo and behold, 
It was my Mel over there cutting my baby's hair. He found Mel after 15 years on his own. Grown man. Hadn't seen Mel since he was a little boy. And here I am yet again with another child. <laughs> and Mel cutting his hair. I'm so appreciative of him. He keep my boys looking awesome. Definitely, definitely. That's what's up. So finally, Mel, um, tell us where you're from. Tell us your upbringing a little bit. East New York. It's New York, what up? Yeah, you already know. Definitely. East New York, um, Brooklyn, most of all my life, born and raised. Definitely, definitely a prodigy of Brooklyn. Yeah, big shout out to Queensbridge too. You already know, MC. At least, at least 15 years. Basically, a lot of people don't get to see the journey. When people see like the success of something, but they don't see like what it took to get to the success. Like there's a lot of levels and everybody got their own levels they going through. So like you might go through something and for you, it was real easy, it was super easy. But for somebody else, they don't got the same background as you. So maybe they got a different learning style. It's harder for them. So you just tell that person like, oh, it's super easy. It's like, no, 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 for you it's super easy, but you're gonna face your challenges, it's gonna be hard for you. Success to me is the person that says, I'm gonna do this thing, no matter what, I'm gonna continue to do this thing. Like, the pieces ain't there yet, but I'm gonna figure it out. That is success to me, because you didn't give up. Like, once you give up, like, once you say, like, yo, I'm done, I'm not doing this, like, you're not successful. You're not successful anymore. The success is, no matter what, I'm going to figure this out. To give people a little background information, I just want you to tell people how you started, how you got into this business. Okay, just to give you a little something. Um, I actually started cutting hair in prison. And at that time, I was young. Probably was 18, 19 years old. And when you're in prison, as you know, people go through that, they, they, they ask you, do you want to take a trade, a job trade? So you need some, make some money for compensating. Okay. Man, my job description was, I said, well, let me take Barbara. That was suggested to me. But at that time, I didn't know I was going to become one of the world's famous. Okay, okay. All right, awesome. So after you got your trade, Mel, tell us what really made you feel like that you can take your business into the hair specialist game. Well, actually, I believe it might have been a calling from years ago before I even thought about being a barber. Okay. But um, it all began after um, I gave up, which is a, it's a kind of like society. Right, right. You know, I came home from prison. I was looking, just doing a lot of job searching. I was going here, there. I was reading Daily News. I was reading The Times, trying to find any job that would hire me so I could get my life together. And for about the last couple of months, I kept being rejected, 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 and nobody would hire me. So one day, I, 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 it, it dawned on me. I seen a, a, um, an ad in the newspaper, and it said, Barbara Warner. So after um, being turned, that was my last resort, because after being turned off job after job after job, I was like, man, I can't find the work. Then when I seen that ad, I said, Barbara wanted, I realized, wait a minute. I forgot about the talent. That's something that I love to do. Mm -hmm. And I went and applied for it. And that was the beginning of everything that ever happened for me in my entire life. Looking for something else, but it was right there in my face all along. And it's like, yeah, this is your journey. Mm -hmm. But it's like, where I was seeing you from the shop over there, and, mm -hmm. and then you started your own journey. You came over here, and I remember all the different dynamics of like personalities that was here in the barber shop and each of the shops that they like went. Mm -hmm. And you was like, there was definitely hate. <laughs> of course. Yeah, there was hate. I can't be like, yo, that's the one part I can't deny. Mm -hmm. And everybody came from them, and he like, oh, yo, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass you some customers. And people get mad at that, but it's like, bro, he's looking out for you. Like, why you be mad at somebody looking out for you? So, it's like to see your journey right now is crazy. Like, I was just thinking about that when I passed by. I'm like, okay, you have to sign up. I always see on Instagram being a thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's really telling that story. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, it's a story because that's what people attract to. They want to know, like, yo, I can do this too. And when you find out somebody's like you, no one can do this if they want to do it. You might pay a little bit extra if you go to a certain school. But it's like, you can also be smart. You can also be different. Like, you don't always have to do the same blueprint. Like, that's the one thing I want cats to know. Like, they could be different. They don't got to do the same blueprint. 
Bro, like, you was always inspiring. I used to care. I remember when I first started cutting it, you was young. You say you're 30 years old now. Take 15 years from that, maybe 10, 10 years from that, 25, or 20 years old. You actually, before I had my own website, put my website together. Yeah. When I met a lot of, almost every artist in the world, they used to come to the barbershop or the record store. And they used to give me mad shout outs. Sometimes when you ask somebody to do something, they don't want to do it because it's hate. They don't want you to shine. They don't want they don't want to share no knowledge whatsoever. But he was there for me from the beginning. And he didn't even know today I was doing the ending of my documentary. So it's only right that you got to be in it. Yeah, I appreciate that. You, you know what I'm saying? Anything <laughs> else you need to say? Um, man, I think that was the biggest part about it is like just doing stuff out of love. For everybody that love you, it's gonna be somebody that hates you because there are people that love you. But the reality is they just don't love themselves. And they just on their journey. So it's like you can sit there and like take all your energy and give it away to that person, or you can just give it to the people that's loving you. So for me, I rather support people that's loving me. But just doing things I love. You never know the people who you meet, where they're gonna take you, or how you can take somebody else somewhere. Cause now I'm in a position where I can help other people out. Where I just wanted to help people before it's just like out of freedom. It's like, no, now I can put you onto something. And now it came from love, so I think that's a huge part of it right there. <laughs>